Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this Citizens Electoral Council meeting uh, here in the seat of Griffith for Jan Pakalis' campaign. Uh, as you know, if you've seen the flyer, the title of this meeting is Developing Northern Australia for 100 Million People. And uh, we're going to hear lots and lots about that pretty soon. But we're going to begin with a musical offering. I'm Doug Mitchell, I'm from the LaRouche Youth Movement, if you didn't know who I am. Uh, I'm going to be your moderator or your MC for the evening. Um, and this evening is a landmark event for Australia. I mean, we're, we're sitting at a fork in the road at the moment with our future. We can either go down the path of depopulation, uh, which is under this fraud of blaming all of our economic problems on so-called overpopulation. I mean, I had a guy 
on uh, Saturday who said, we can fit 50 million more people in this country and you wouldn't even know they're here. <laughs> so uh, people, a lot of people know it's a whole bunch of garbage. But uh, this fraud of overpopulation, which the newly installed Gillard government has got with their sustainable population minister, um, that's going to lead us down this path of depopulation. Or we can go the other way. We can happily develop this country's landmass with great infrastructure projects, with rail projects, um, high-speed magnetic levitation rail, water projects, which I'm sure we'll hear more about tonight. And that's going to support you know, our population. Uh, and after our three speakers, we will have time for questions. So um, you know, think about what you can ask our speakers. and. Um, Look forward to a good dialogue. Um, so firstly, I'd like to introduce the woman who made Kevin Rudd officially off the planet <laughs> about the global financial crisis. Uh, I'm going to introduce to you the Citizens Electoral Council's Queensland State Secretary and candidate for Griffith to put Kevin Rudd into permanent retirement, Jan Pakalis. I'd like to thank everybody for being here tonight, particularly those who've come from far and wide. I know we've got some people from Western Australia, Darwin, even New South Wales, Matters, and you Northern know. Queensland. You don't have a microphone. Okay. So you, have to, oh. you have to be loud. Okay. So did you hear my thank yous? Right. And also particularly thank you to um, all our activists. The youth movement have been here for feels like a long time. I think it's only been a week, <laughs> but they've been living at my house for um, seven days at least, and there's seven of them, so it's pretty crowded, but every day we've gone out organising and um, done some good work, getting lots of contacts, and, and some of them are here tonight even, which is lovely to see. Uh, everybody's having to take a step up when the youth are here as well, because they're driving us in directions that, and into our uncomfort zones. Um, so I think we're truly lucky to be born in this period in history. Because where are all the rules of the game, you know, the, the tables are turned and um, who knows what's going to happen in the future. It's very unpredictable. So, and all potentials are on the table, whether we go to a, a dark age or whether we have a, I'd like to see a, a scientific and cultural renaissance. Um, so what are our world leaders doing? LaRouche says, Lyndon LaRouche, for those new people who may not have read too much about us, we affiliate with a statesman in, in America, Lyndon LaRouche, who's like a Franklin Delano Roosevelt today, who's carrying on the tradition of the, the constitutional, uh, the founders of their constitution for economic development as a sovereign nation using um, a credit system, not this dead monetary system that uh, I think they keep on pumping up with our taxpayer money. So uh, LaRouche says that they're hiding in their bunkers like Hitler and pooing their pants at the moment. Um, so in the midst of the greatest crisis in history that humanity has ever faced, a global financial crisis brought on, the, brought on by the cumulative effort of a process of d disinvestment into the physical economy and by that uh, free trade globalisation it's called today. Um, LaRouche's solutions are currently on the, on the um, forefront of in international debate the Glass-Steagall reforms of Roosevelt's 1933 um, banking reforms, that what need, that's what needs to be done and that's what is so controversial about LaRouche. He's always put the solutions up, never wavered away from protection of the general welfare, it's always come first. Um, along with the Glass-Steagall, we used to say it more often, we put it in the term of, an, of New Bretton Woods. A New Bretton Woods was was proposed because it modelled on what we did in the 1940s, in 1944, to establish uh, economic development in the post-war period. Um, and Roosevelt's intention was to free humanity from colonialism. So those, 
policies representing the, the traditional uh, founding fathers of the US was adopted by as world policy. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't carried through to today for the, since they floated the dollar off gold, we've gone into um, a death spiral slower and slower. So why I'm running in the federal election representing LaRouche and the CEC, um, not, to do, um, not to do so would be not only irresponsible when you know better, but it would be genocidal for the population of the world and we're not going to be immune to that process here in Australia. Um, in 1999, I came across the CEC kind of reluctantly, like most of us, and, um, and why do we need to know about this American, of all people, you know, they're a bit too loud. Well, um, while we're, I was raising a family, that is, so small children, um, doing a good thing, trying to be a good citizen like most people. Uh, and my husband, with my husband Dennis, um, I think he's up the back tonight, but we are living in Mackay at the time. And we were happy in our ignorance of politics on the surface, uh, but we knew in our hearts that major things were being done wrong in this country by the leadership. When they start closing down schools and hospitals, it doesn't take... You, you don't have to be politically minded to realise that, well, someone's got to do something. Um, so, and I asked, what is the intention of a government that would allow that to happen, even, you know, even to in involve our country in gambling? Um, it's insane. Um, and they weren't just doing it in one area. It was in every area. Just about every decision they ever make is wrong. It's only short term for some private interest. And the turning point came in, 19, in 2002 when um, it was brought to my attention since my, my oldest son was 15 and he was at Mackay State High School in year 10 and three kids committed suicide in, over a three month period, all in, all in grade 10 in my son's class. And of course the whole school was in um, counselling but what, what could they do? What can they do, right? The kids know that they're being lied to. The kids know that their parents are going back to school. They know that their families are breaking up. They know that drugs are everywhere. The war, it was 2002, so we had a war starting and it was an unjust war. So, you know, little things, you know, from the top down, it was, it's very obvious if, if you're young and innocent and, you, and you're asking genuine questions, why aren't your parents' generation answering them honestly? Why is, why is so much crap in their lives? So I um, wrote to Lyndon LaRouche by email and he answered me uh, and I, because I wanted to speak to the headmaster and I took along our Republican pamphlet, our infrastructure paper and Fidelio magazine which is about a cultural renaissance. And, I, and you know, he spoke to me like, he, like a good um, you know, um, schoolmaster would and he listened and I spoke you know, genuinely with passion for these ideas of the CEC and LaRouche because he, and this time, you know, they didn't believe there was a crash, right? It was still coming, right? But um, the teacher was very good and I was able to address the kids but I wasn't allowed to get political, right? But that's okay because with, because the, LaRouche, the article LaRouche uh, offered to, uh, offered me at the time was his latest one, it was called The Historical Individual. And, and that historical individual, especially uh, if you look at our Republican pamphlets, there's some beautiful minds in there of Australians that if our kids got to know, then they could emulate that leadership that made us become the lucky country. At the moment, they've got no beautiful leadership out there, at least in their lounge rooms, unless it's us somehow on the street, knocking on their door, you know, getting into their lives breaking the rules, doing it without a permit, you know. <laughs> um, so, you know, it was, it's been a, a, a steep learning curve, but it's, um, it's one well worth it become, because you come to realise you really, really change because you've gone from that person who's just been out for their own pleasure, you know, like you get pleasure out of raising your family. I mean, you're not terribly, you don't have to be a selfish person, just be normal 
but it's not good enough when the leadership stinks. And so, you know, you, when, when you introduce with good ideas and you've never been political before, well, you should grab them and, and run with it and do what you can. And so that's what I, that's what I did. And realise that humanity um, develops when the good people, when the individuals, like they're the ones that move the history and the mob, the mob will, you know, jump off the cliff like we are going, right? So it, it's up to a virtual handful of individuals who you have to get to know through our literature. It's not just Australians, but there's been, you know, handfuls around the world that have cooperated and collaborated. Um, and LaRouche represents that, that tradition today. And when you do get to know those those individual minds as personalities, you get to think like them. And, and it's not only the expression of the ideas which they're imparting, but you also are encouraged with, you do get courage because they're backed up. You're not just standing here as an individual trying to change the world, all right? Lurus isn't one individual. Well, he is one individual, but you know, there's centuries of people you know, behind him that have brought us to this point. And so you have those voices in your heads. And, and one of them is Percy B. Shelley. And I'd like to recite this poem. It's called Ozymandias. I met a traveller from an ancient land who said, two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Nearby, on the sand, half sunk, a shattered visage lies whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that it sculpted well those passions red, which yet survive, stamped on these lifeless things, the hand that mocked them and the heart that fed. And on the pedestal, these words appear. My name is Ozymandias, King of Kings, Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. Nothing beside remains around the decay of that colossal wreck. Boundless and bare, the lone and level sands stretch far away. So Percy B. Shelley is somewhat prophetic of what is going on today. If you imagine those two trunkless legs of stone being the so-called pillars of our banks or our political institutions. And, and, you know, there's nothing around them that is worth anything of value. So what replaces the old system is now our concern. Fascist austerity in the form of uh, feudal taxes or the fraud of overpopulation or a scientific renaissance through the promotion of the general welfare and our policies, allowing more people to, um, to grow and develop. Um, to our advantage, we, have, we are in this a revolutionary period, a fork in the road, like Doug said. Uh, in the last um, nine months, you've had Turnbull dumped by his own party for supporting uh, the Queen's emissions trading scheme just prior um, to the um, Copenhagen meeting on global warming. Uh, Turnbull was placed by the, the monarchy-loving Tony Abbott, which is no better. And more recently, you've seen Rudd go down dramatically and, and um, Gillard replace him with um, a Gillard who we don't know whether it's a real woman or a man. <laughs> so, but we've got reality on our side uh, because if the elections... It's only going to get worse until we make it better. So she could self-destruct. So everything in the future hinges, hinges on what we do or do not do. Um, don't look for the politicians to implement the solution because they won't, because if they were going to, they'd already be doing it. So, so welcome to the launch of my campaign for the federal seat of Griffith. I'm not just against Rudd. I think he won't even make it. but but we do have to be represented. You know, it doesn't matter who's out there. They're all, whether it's Labor, Liberal, the Greens, National Party, or any independent, they're all pro-free trade, globalisation. We're the only ones who are going to change the system. 
So take advantage of the speakers and um, keep your ears peeled, ask questions, speak to the, to the limb members, uh, join our activist force, we need more people, uh, become aware of the opportunities for deployments in your area or, no, not in your area, in Griffith, all right? And let me know about them. Like, you know, we put out um, press releases a couple of times a week. Now, if we were to man the railway stations in the afternoon where people coming from here, there and everywhere get off where they live in the Griffith electorate, there's 17 um, train stations in Rudd's electorate, right? We don't have to do them all every week, but we do what we can. If you've only got uh, a Sunday morning, it's your only day off, and you don't want to sleep in, you know, you do what Ray did, get out there and he got rid of 200 papers in, in three trains, right? I mean, that's better than what we do in the city. Or you can be like um, Oliver in, in Toowoomba who goes out, you know, Oliver's um, in his 80s, goes out one hour a week and gets out 100, on average, 100, 100 papers in that one hour every week. And uh, he's asking for more bumped it up to 150. <laughs> so um, don't, buy, don't be, um, you must be defined by stubborn optimism and LaRouche has been exemplary at that as a leader um, having that because otherwise how could you last to 87 if you're going to give up at every little, I know it's hard, you know, doing what we do but you've got to have that um, stubborn optimism. Okay. So I'm confident that we can, we can um, get our ideas out. You're going to challenge people to think, at the very least, even if, even if they don't want to know. You're going to challenge them to think, right? And that's what we've got to do. It's, it's, we're always doing the right thing. Even if we don't win the election, we've done the right thing. So it doesn't, don't worry about the effect of the, you know, in terms of votes. That's not the point. Okay? It's being that historical individual representing these ideas today so that future humanity can benefit from your role. And that's what I'd like to say. Thank you.